So now we're going to look at what's happening in Europe. What are some of the early indicators that we've been looking at? And and when you when we turn to the eurozone aggregate, uh, your manufacturing PMI came in right in line at 58. Uh, money supply dipped a bit, which I think was expected, just given what has been said by um, by Lagarde and and how things are going on the ECB side. Eurozone services PMI was expected at 53.3, came in at 53.1, you know, composite coming in just below expectations. So on the aggregate, things look stable. And and that's that's great. And that's kind of what we've been talking about. We think there's a little bit of a creep lower, but we're still going to be in expansionary territory. The problem is the quality of it, which is when we look at Germany. So when we look at Germany, manufacturing was expected to be at 57.9, came in at 57.4. We think the manufacturing stays fairly strong, fair, you know, but the services is where we have the biggest problem in terms of what this looks like going forward. Retail sales in November were a bit better than expectations. We think that uh, based on what we're seeing, that reverses in December. You know, still just kind of waffling back and forth. Unemployment change um, a bit better than expected. But the uh, services PMI was expected at 48.4, came in at 48.7. So the composite was expected at 50, came in at 49.9. The service side is where we see some of these problems when you start looking at the health of the consumer, the health of retail, especially in Europe where they, they wages are inflation remains elevated. You look at uh, electricity prices, heating prices, energy prices in general is creating a lot of these pressure points, which we think is going to hit services and retail and the consumer a bit harder, which is going to kind of bring down some of this underlying uh, growth expectations as we continue to see um, uh, China not buying as much, especially from Europe, and keeping some of these underlying pressure, this underlying pressure on, on Germany and just the overall Eurozone economy. So just to kind of put it into perspective in terms of where we are, we continue to see the manufacturing PMI drift lower. You know, we think that it'll stabilize a bit just because you do have construction coming back. You do have some of that automobile um, manufacturing. Chips still remain a problem. That's going to be an overhang. But again, some of this is going to be a little bit of a positive when you look at the manufacturing side. But then when you look at Eurozone loans to businesses starting to improve on the business side, that's a positive while household starts to kind of roll over, which when we're talking about you, we want to see loans borrowing, uh, businesses borrowing, but households starting to slow a bit. And we think that that's going to be, it's going to be something that's going to continue and bleed into essentially the, uh, really the end of uh, the year. You know, retail sales still remain just above kind of the trend line, but we, we do think that the retail sales do come down, especially in Germany as we do have, and it's not just Germany, but other areas where we see some of these pressure points that continue to come out at hitting specifically the consumer and kind of where things are shaking out on the German and and, uh, European side. Then when we look at Spain, retail sales in November also strong, came in at 5.9%. That's something that we think is going to drop again with CPI expected at 0.3, coming at 1.3%. Year over year was expected at 5.6%, came in at 6.7. So you're seeing these pressure points with manufacturing PMI coming in at 56.2 versus the expectation of 56.4. So this is where Spain inflation going up, you know, wages not keeping pace, impacting what retail sales are going to look like, what the consumer is going to do. And that is playing out in all areas of uh, of Europe, not just in Germany, not just in Spain. So now we flip to France, where manufacturing PMI beat expectations coming in at 55.6 versus the estimate of 55, 54.9. You know, yet CPI coming in fairly flat, you know, slightly below estimates with consumer confidence getting a bit better. But then when you look at services, PMI missed slightly, was expected at 57.1, came in at 57. And then the composite was came in slightly above at 55.8 versus 55.6. So the service side is the one that we think is going to have that creep. And that's the one to really hone in on and pay attention to when you're looking at what does growth look like heading into Q1 and Q2. 
not just in the U.S., but in Europe and other areas, as we do come into a rate rising cycle, you know, negative bonds are starting to, to disappear, given they're still negative yielding bonds, but they're not to the same level. And as those rates continue to creep up, that's going to put more pressure on consumers, which again is going to limit their buying power. So then when we look at um, Italy, so Italy manufacturing PMI was expected at 61.5, came in at 62. But then on the Italy service side was expected at 54, came in at 53. So again, seeing that play out, Italy composite PMI was expected at 56.1, came in at 54.7. There's that drip down, but it's really driven by services. The manufacturing we think stays fairly firm. It's the service side that will struggle as CPI inflation came in fairly in line, again, showing kind of the inflationary pressure that remains as wages did diminish as inflation goes up, which is why we're going to want to continue to watch what is PPI doing? What are some of the underlying pressure points that we continue to see as Turkey you know, continues to disintegrate? That is going to put pressure on Spain and other uh, European banks that have the most exposure to um, to Turkey. And again, that knock on effect. And what does that look like as emerging markets and developed markets continue their rate rising cycle, as we talked about it in segment one. So now that we've talked uh, briefly about Europe, we'll have more to come as more data comes out. We're going to pivot over into the ASEAN nations, China and what is happening on the in the uh, Asian theater.